for giving me this podium. It's very valuable for me. And uh, the second thing was this wonderful view I got during the last three, I mean, last night, during a three hour ride that Ken gave me, where he explained his philosophy of these talks. And I really applaud you for really starting that. Um, I will first start with a very little preamble that whatever I'm talking, I'm not trying to push my little microchips uh, into the oil field, nor am I trying to talk about any kind of business development. You are very powerful. You, are, you represent one of the most powerful industries in the world. And you are possibly looking at the future of the world's energy production because heavy oil is the way the world will go as we look into the paradigms of more technology per barrel and um, more money for each barrel that you produce. And Alberta is in a spectacular position to lead that particular movement all over the world. And I have gotten feedback from how oil is produced in Kuwait. I have friends who work in Dubai, Saudi Arabia, and these places. I have people in Norway. And the heavy oil processing in Alberta, at least academically, stirs a lot of emotions both ways, positive and negative. I will be talking about the positive things because I have been trying to do a lot to convince various people at various places about why we should be looking at a technology pool developing out of this place. So I have a slightly bigger objective than pushing my little technologies and microchips. I want you to think how you can develop a small industry in Alberta. With that preamble, which wasn't terribly short, um, I'd give you a very quick background uh, of why I am in this particular position talking about these things. It came from my students. I teach energy in mechanical engineering department, and I, every time I start with, I start with these really green thinking students. They don't like oil initially. They don't like coal. They think all the new non-conventional and renewable energy resources will solve every problem of the world. And I have to give them facts. I push down bitter pills their th throat. And eventually, they end up becoming very good advocates of why um, oil is not such a bad thing after all. And I will start with that a little bit. This is an equation. I'm an engineer, pardon me. Uh, but this is not an engineering equation. This IPAT equation is essentially a very old economic equation. It has been shoved down our throat a lot of times by IPCC, the carbon sequestration thing, and things like that. It's a beautiful equation. Impact, typically environmental impact, is a product of three things population, affluence of the population, that means how much we want to acquire good consumable products, consumer products, improve our lifestyle, and then technology. The impact of technology um, when you are basically trying to using, use processes to convert a raw material, a resource, to a unit amount of consumable. And of course, if you increase population, more people wanting to have an affluent lifestyle using a business as usual technology, you are actually looking at increasing the environmental degradation very fast. And that's how we try to model impact, deleterious effect of technologies when it is widely adopted. Came across this nice concept from Jeffrey Sachs um, which was just taking the T and writing T as 1 over T and defining S, a quantity, as 1 by T. So now, the marker for this 1 by T is a very simple thing. Impact, population, and affluence are identical in this equation, except that S equal to, is equal to 1 over T. And a little bit of mathematics will tell you that it basically means now that it's the amount of consumables that you can produce per unit of environmental 
impact that you will have from a technology. So if you start defining technology based on this S and you try to maximize S, you will have mitigated the deleterious environmental impact of technologies. And this is the point which I try to tell my students to adopt when they are thinking about bringing in a new technology. Um, this is the pet way of my discussing about conventional cars and hybrid vehicles. Um, I'll tell you when I look at word word, the world like this and I use a currency for sustainability called water, I get amazingly funny figures. Let's look at how much energy is being produced. Um, um, sorry, how much water am I consuming to produce a megawatt hour of energy, primary energy based on a fuel? Well, this is one of the slides my students see. The first one is biodiesel. Second one is fuel ethanol, then coal, then oil sands, natural gas. I have put in the oil sands because this is very Alberta. Um, and the x-axis gives you the number of liters of water that you needed to produce one megawatt hour of energy. The idea is this is a logarithmic scale. Conventional energy production has a lower footprint on water. And if you get the drift of where I am wow. going here, it's very simple. In context of Alberta, look at the two numbers. I don't know if I have a laser pointer here. Is this the pointer? Um, we export two world-class products. One is our beef, and the second is a barrel of bitumen from oil sands. Look at the amount of water we are exporting with each kilogram of prime Alberta beef. And look at the amount of water we are exporting with one barrel of bitumen. And that number looks astronomical, but this is true. Whenever we take an agriculture-based product, which is supposed to be food, and make it into an affluent commodity, we always spend a lot of water. And I won't talk to the converted. You are from Calgary. You know where the water for the agricultural, I mean, for the farming product comes from. It's a drier region of Alberta. So with these types of preamble, I go into this idea of if I have this whole concept of sustainability and this is as warped as my thinking, how do I get into uh, talking about microsystems? I certainly am not talking about making tiny chips that makes one uh, nano mole of something or actually pico mole of something and multiplex it. That's not the way I am going to push any technology for the oil industry at least if I have known my business for the last 15 years. So um, I would basically say that I wanted to use these um, micro nanotechnologies for a slightly different purpose. I'll quickly skip this slide because again, um, my goal here is uh, not to talk to the persons who are already converted. I will just present you a few thoughts of why micro nano. And I know that all of you from the oil industry will be familiar with different aspects of the problems of the oil industry. You're processing upstream and downstream processing. You're dealing with emulsion. You're dealing with the um, character of heavy oil, its tantrums. And I will throw some microscopic ideas that we have generated in our labs. You add two plus two together, and if you have any questions, I have the entire day to answer your questions. But here is an experiment. 